Hey guys, what's up? Long time no see. Now, I've had um, comments on my daughter and people want to see more about her story um, and a little bit more information about her. Hold on, someone's calling. What's up? So I've had like some comments before I actually moved. So this video should have been here by now, but stuff's happened. Um, I've had comments about my daughter and that you guys want to know a little bit more about her. Um, and I'll give some information that like isn't too personal. Hmm. But I decided that maybe the best way to start her journey is through her preemie journey. Because that's where it all started. Um, she is special needs. But, okay. Let's go to when I was pregnant. <laughs> so, I didn't really have any problems when I was pregnant until I was 29 weeks. Um, we watched the movie Ted. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember that movie. It is kind of old now. I mean, my daughter was seven. But we went to theaters to see it. And there was a part, I don't remember which part, but I laughed really hard and apparently it broke my water. Because, uh, the next day I had a bunch of leakage on the floor. He's making fun of me. Um, not on the floor. This is his fault. No, it's not. Get, go! On the bed. And people thought I was just being myself. <laughs> but it like, wasn't me. And I had to keep changing and changing and changing. I'm just like, this isn't right. We go to the hospital and apparently my water broke and I had to be hospitalized for four weeks, which actually was a month until I had her. Um, during that time, I could get wheelchair privileges, but it seemed like every time that I was about to get my wheelchair privileges, something bad happened. So I barely got to leave this freaking room and I was going nuts. I like bled everywhere and so much and was having so many complications that at one point I had to have a bedpan, which is like the little thing that apparently you have on your bed and that you pee in that. That was pretty difficult for me. And then they're like, the point of this is so you don't have to sit up and squat. I'm like, but I can't do it. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't want it all over me. Um, I was only able to take like five minute showers and they didn't want me walking or doing a whole bunch of movement because they were afraid the um, umbilical cord from the baby was going to like come out, I guess. I don't know. And while I was in here, um, everybody and their brother seemed to have their baby. So I was able to leave like twice to a couple people I knew that was having a baby. Uh, and when I first got to the hospital, they actually gave me two steroid shots within 24 hours, and I had, uh, and one of them was for her lungs, and I can't remember what the other one was for. Maybe they were both so for her lungs to grow, because they were like, behind. Anyways, and then, after that, I was on like a 24 hour baby monitor thing. They like wrap this thing around you and like it listens to the heartbeat or whatever. Um, anyways, it was very hard to sleep with that. One thing I hate about hospitals is they say, you need to get some rest. You should go to sleep. You can't go to sleep because you won't leave us alone and stop poking us. That's pretty much the gist of it. And um, the only time that 
my daughter moved was when one of those things were on me. Other than that, she wouldn't move at all. She like made there was like no um, indication that there was a baby in there unless freaking I would have that thing wrapped around me. Uh, they had to poke me like every other day, I believe it was, to check the um, blood count of the something or other, red cells or something. And I fought with the people who did the blood work like constantly, like they didn't, they didn't, nobody talks to each other in there, I swear to God. So I would get the blood drawn like normal. But then the next day, someone else would try to poke me. I'm like, no, uh you're not supposed to till the other day, or till tomorrow. Every other day, not every day. And then they go look, and they come back in like, you're right. Yeah, I know I'm right. Like, I really want to be poked for the fun of it. This was an everyday thing, though. This wasn't like a once in a while. It happened every time. So I fought them, like, all freaking months. And it was annoying. And I had to have an ultrasound every day to make sure the baby was okay. Um... And then after start, stuff started slowing down, it was every other day, but then I got worse again and then it went back to every day. And then I had to have one of those porta potty things instead of the bedpan. Um, I, and it seemed like her dad was always missing. I remember when I was in the bathroom, all of a sudden blood just started squirting out with everywhere. She was nowhere to be found. It was all over the floor. I mean, it looked like someone was murdered. Um, so I had to bring the freaking nursey thing for someone to come in. And I was freaking out. I mean, it looked like uh, that I was having a miscarriage or something. Like, there was so much blood. And I'm actually surprised she even made it. At one point, I thought I was going to have a stillbirth. But... No, she came out. <laughs> but um, then when the time came, I'm not very horrible, horrible month was over. I started having these pains. It was like right on the Sunday, that would be four weeks is when I went into labor. But I had to have like these giant pads on my underwear. And I had to have like these uh, disposable underwear, I guess. And like, I kept telling them someone was right. And they just put an IV in me and gave me more fluids because they think it was from the um, urinary tract infection I got. And the, uh, I got something else from having those giant pads. I had like two things. And like, cat. Sorry. <laughs> and. Then a couple hours goes by and I'm getting worse and like my contractions are getting worse and then they finally checked me. I was, I think, a, I think it was a three at first and they're like, yep, you're going into labor. Let's get you to the room. No crap. And then, uh, the lights changing out there, I'm sorry. I don't have like no good lighting in here yet. And then they take me there and before you know I'm a five, before you know I'm a ten, because I don't know, that just went like really fast. But when I counted all like eight hours of labor and like I pushed her out within five, but like I had an epidural and it did no good, nothing at all. I felt everything, maybe like one side of my hip or something was numb, but like it did not fix anything down there, you know? It was, it, it still had feeling, and it hurt. <laughs> it was like a natural birth. At least she came out fast, and she was like three pounds and 15 ounces, but she wouldn't eat, so she made it down to like two pounds and 12 ounces, and they brought out some creamy stuff. Um, she was in the NICU for like a week, but she's had a lot of problems. Um, like, she, after we got her off the hospital formula, she like, um, started choking every time she ate, and like her body would get stiff, 
And she would even have this like projectile vomiting everywhere. So she had a lot of nurses, um, OTs, PTs, STs. She actually has scoliosis, so she is technically still special needs. She also was born with like a half extra of a rib. Um, there's probably more in my head that I'm not thinking right now, but it was a very traumatizing experience. And on top of that, while she was in the NICU, my family and her dad's family fought a lot. Like, um, his mom and some other woman was bullying and harassing my mom. And I would go, I mean, I wouldn't even know it until I came out, and then I caught them cornering her. And it's like, dude, just leave my mom alone. And then my mom was afraid to go up there. She called them the nesters because they're all like in one room and they're always there and you can't get rid of them. Uh, but I still got to call the shots. His mom apparently did. And every time I made a decision, the nurses backed up her decision. And it was very, very, very annoying. Like, I didn't want anybody in there without me or the dad. But somehow there was a grandma and then there was the his brother and then like there's a bunch of people in there and it gave me a bunch of anxiety and like the whole thing was a mess. Um, and then after she was born, or no, not after she was born, after she came home, um, things kind of went downhill. Like the grandma still called the shots and I couldn't take her out in, without them or whatever and I couldn't take her where I wanted to take her. One time she went somewhere was if they wanted to take her somewhere and then like one time we're at the restaurant and uh, she put chairs around her and said if anyone asks tell them she has rabies. I'm like what why would I tell them my child has rabies? Come on that's just ridiculous. Um, I am very traumatized from what I went through with everything within that small period of time and there will be another video on a little bit what's going on now um, but they they made the whole situation hell and they're still kind of making my life hell and um, I will put like a little bit of detail in it, but I don't know how much I'm going to put in it in case they come across these videos. But I went through a lot while being pregnant and because she was my first, I was terrified to have another kid. I even told the nurse that I wanted to get a, um, a not C-section dork stamp, a freaking um, tub a tubulation thingy, you know, where the tire tubes up and think that's it. Yeah. Uh -huh. But she said you have to at least be like, I don't know, 25 or at least have two kids. I was 25, so I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> I'm glad I did it because then I had my son, but now I, I really, I really am done. But. Um, at one point, I did get really sick in there that I almost did have a C-section. Like, I don't know what the problem was. But I was, I don't know, I wasn't doing so hot there for a second. On the plus side, though, I was able to play, play the Wii there, but they didn't like me trying to sit up to roll the Wiimote for the bowling ball. Anyways, um... That's the end of the video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't want thumbs down, no, just thumbs up, okay? Thumbs up. Thumbs up all the way. Alright? And let me know what y'all think. And until next time, bye guys.